iconic one. Jeremy Jordan and Jay Farrell help chronicle the story of the unsung hero behind some of the biggest musical acts of the 1970s in the music biopic, Spinning Gold. This is Casablanca Records, the biggest independent label anyone had ever seen. And the artists, they were family. Yes, the Isley Brothers, Gladys Knight, Parliament, Bill Withers, Donna Summer. They legally changed my name. No! Everything is hotter in summer. I knew some of the music that came out of the recording studio that they'd formed, and, and uh, that was pretty much it. As a child, I think you you know who your parents become. I don't know that you know who they were on the way to becoming that. We went $7 million in debt. You broke. The whole town knows it. What the hell do you really want? Tim said one of the reasons that he, he chose me to play the role was that I had a lot of these sort of you know, essence of his father, and he allowed me to to find that version of it within myself. It was incredible working with Jeremy, you know, and to be able to see him in this way, you know, using uh, a completely different side. We usually see him singing a lot more, we, and he really, really stepped into um, this so beautifully. Casting that role was impossible. Um, I met with different people over the years and, and dabbled in a couple of different directions over the years. And I remember reaching out to Larry Mark, uh, my uh, producing partner on the film, saying, you know, like, who's the best performer on Broadway? Who can just own any stage? And he said, Jeremy Jordan. I said, I have no idea who that is. And I went home and YouTubed it um, and just lost myself in this extraordinary performer. It was weird sort of in my head, but in execution, it really wasn't. Except for every once in a while when Tim would be like, hey, dad, I was like, that's weird, don't do that. We were waging an all out war against all the majors. All at once. You gotta be out your mind. These labels fight dirty. Tim actually told me that Neil and, and, and Cecil's relationship was like brothers. Whatever Neil wanted to do, Cecil was right there behind him to back him. I, I went off of that narrative of him having that man's back until the death. You just called the Italian mob to tell the black mob not to kill us. You had a better idea? <laughs> I grew up listening to Bill Withers, P. Funk, and, and, and George Clinton. I, I grew up listening to Donna Summers. I grew up listening to Gladys Knight. And I saw Kiss, and they scared the hell out of me. I knew half of the story. Now, what I was told was the other half. He kind of saw things before everybody else. So he saw Kiss and saw Donna Summer as this incredible thing that was going to change the music. Midnight plane to Houston. My people from Georgia, they would never take a plane to Houston. Music with Harvey Mason, who's of course in incredibly talented, and Evan Bogart, who's also incredibly talented. I don't think that we could have gone um, wrong as long as we stayed true to, okay, what is it that we are trying to do? These two kids from Queens had dreams about being the next gods of rock. That is who you are. It wasn't on a bus, but the but the conversation itself, you know, did happen. And my father wasn't Neil Bogart; he invented his name, just like Donna Summer was Ladonna Gaines, and and Stanley Eisen became Paul Stanley. And they were all finding their way to who they wanted to be. And that conversation, I think, is so much about being who you want to be. What happens next? You do. Thanks for checking out this video. We want to know what would you have asked? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, for more videos like this, hit the MIH TV logo right here. And for the next awesome video, click right there.